some guidance. Good afternoon, Saints. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Healing Class. Amen. Healing God. Class. We all. We've been teaching on a subject for some weeks. Um, I think about a month now. Um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yes, he has. That's in Galatians, the third chapter. We're going to look at it a little bit more in depth today. Because as I meditated on this and studied these scriptures, and then you, you know, you go to work or wherever, you go out in public and you listen to what people are, what's coming out of their mouth. And you say, well, they, they say they're a child of God. And you have to pray for them. Um, no, the thing, people say that they're a child of God, that's because religion has really made the gospel a known effect. Right, but they, the word of God. they may say that because they religiously go to church, they religiously that's go what to the Bible. Saying. Religion they, has they, made the word a of ritual, God a known effect. Right, they don't really believe uh, it. Let us pray, get our minds cleared up here. And Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for your goodness and everything that you have done for us. We ask that you will clear our mind, clear our thoughts, and so that we can hear what you're saying here tonight. We ask for forgiveness of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. We ask that you will open our eyes and our heart so we can see and understand what you are saying to us here tonight. And for the viewers who are looking at this video that they might get some understanding and Father, I ask that you lead me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. I'd like to start at Galatians here, the third chapter. The sixth verse, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. For the scripture foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed, should all nations be blessed. So then, they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Amen. Galatians, the third chapter. Well, he prayed and then he started reading. Right. He wasn't there. Well, you know, I'm excited. Amen. Amen. It's good to be excited. You know, um, because of the You're blessing. The blessing. Amen. When you really understand what the blessing is all about, you'll be excited too. I'm surprised that you ain't saying, I'm blessed. We say it every day. <laughs> you know, we say it through the day and Robin do it too. Amen. We, and we know we bless. Bless, bless, bless. Now He's talking about uh, what I read is um, Galatians 3, uh, verse 6 through 9 out of the King James. And um, no, not today. Uh, that eighth verse it says. And the scriptures, the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the, gent, the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, Indeed shall all nations be blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. It says heathen in your Bible. Yeah, it does say heathen in the King James. Gentiles. Well, Gentiles are heathens. <laughs> That's another name for him. Now, when Paul started this epistle to the Galatians, he says something very interesting in the first chapter. Well, let's take a look at that. Chapter 1. Well, but 
Galatians, the same book, chapter 1. Because this is Paul writing by the Spirit of God to the Galatians, the saints. And Galate was a region of several cities. So he was talking to a lot of people. It says here in the first verse, Paul, an apostle, not a man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he writes here, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him which that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. You mean there's another gospel? No, it's only one. Yes, there is another gospel. It's the gospel that religion preaches. You go to you go to it all depends on which church you go to and, and you you'll know what I'm talking about. One person saying one thing, one person saying something else. It's not the uh, true gospel, is it? It's well let me gospel. let me read this. Mm -hmm. It says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And I think the Amplified says in that eighth verse, it says, let him be condemned to destruction. Mm -hmm. That's what a curse means. That you're down. You're condemned to destruction. Mm -hmm. So he's saying if somebody come preaching any other gospel and what he preached unto you, let him be accursed. Or an angel. Right. A big old angel came down here preaching something else, you know? Well, the seven says it's not really another gospel. Well, hold on. You're reading out of Amplified. Let me read this out of King James. No. You asked that question. No, I didn't ask that question, but the word did. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading, I'm just uh, reading out of the word. It says, as we said before, I say, I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Are you going to persuade men, make them happy, yeah. or are you going to say what God says? Or do easy. I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I shall not be a servant of Christ. Amen. That's true. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I indeed received it, um, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's saying this is what he's telling you. Mm -hmm. He got straight from Jesus Christ. He didn't get it from no man. Amen. He's not trying to please no man by what he's saying. He's going to, you know, just tell you just like it is. Now, the gospel also is uh, recorded in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Did one of y'all want to read that? 1 Corinthians. The, uh, the 15th chapter. Chapter 1 through 4? Yeah. Make sure you read it real loud because we want your nice you said first voice to be on the recording. First Corinthians, sure. which chapter? Fifteenth chapter, verses one through four. Okay. 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 Says now, brother, the 
sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation, which I preached to you, which you welcomed and accepted, and on which you stand by faith. By this faith, you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. If you hold firmly to this word, mm -hmm. which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, mm -hmm. just superficially and without complete commitment. So this is gospel that you got to really be committed to, that God did raise Jesus from the dead. That's what he was talking about in Galatians, the first chapter, too. And also in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, Second Corinthians. You're going to come back to the other verses. Yeah, I'm going to come back to Galatians. I, I'm, building, I'm building on something here. I'm building on something here. I'm giving it to you the way he gave it to me. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 17 to 21. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. And I should have started the timer. That's okay, it's been all eight minutes. Okay. Somebody want to read that? Real nice and loud. Chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. And therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is great or grafted and joined to him by faith, in him as Savior. He is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old thing, the previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, mm -hmm. new things have come because spiritual awakening begins, or rather brings a new life. Amen. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example we might bring others to him. Mm -hmm. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, mm -hmm. not counting people's sins against him, but canceling it. And he has committed us to us the message of reconciliation that is, restoration to favor with God. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his appeal through us. We as Christ's representatives plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. who made Christ, who knew no sin at all, Amen. to judicially be sin on our behalf. So that in him we will become the righteousness of God. That is, we will be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his grace and <coughs> other kindness. So, once you receive Christ, it said, um, once you believe that. He died for your sins and was buried and rose the third day according to the scripture and that you became this new creation in Christ Jesus and you know that Christ be, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become the righteousness of God, right? That's right. That's so we right. are the righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's not our righteousness, it's, it's his, his righteousness. righteousness. Because he became sin for us. Mm -hmm. Now, Galatians, the third chapter, the 13th and 14th verse here. Because Paul says something at the beginning of this chapter. He said, if somebody preaches any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. Right. Or an angel. Right? 
So here in the 14th verse it says, I mean the 13th verse it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. So he became sin for us. That's what the scripture says, right? Yes. He became a curse for us. Yes, he did. So everything under that curse of the law, I mean, it's in, you know, the Old Testament, it's in Leviticus and also Deuteronomy. He became all that for us. Yes. He bore that for us, all of the curse of the law, so that we wouldn't have to bear it. So everything under the curse of the law, we shouldn't have. He, 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 he took all this on himself when he hung on that cross. All our sickness. Now, we went over some sicknesses, but I, I you know, did a more detailed study on it because, you know, the King James and even Amplified don't really give you the full meaning of what these curses of sickness is all about. And, you know, a lot of people like to say, well, I'm suffering for the Lord. Well, we went into that, that right. you can't suffer nothing for the yeah, Lord. Sure, you yeah. can be persecuted for the Lord. Yeah, that's about it. But, you know, a lot of people say, you know, the Lord has put this on me. He's trying to show me something. That's going contradicting the scripture. This is not me saying it. This is what God is saying. He said that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, Amen. being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's how you receive the Spirit, through faith. And this is how you receive your righteousness, through faith. Because God said it. This is not me saying it. This is what he got written in his Holy Scripture. Amen. It's the same way. Uh, go with me to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Let's look at a few of these sicknesses. But it sure did help me when I, I started really doing a detailed study of it. Because, you you know, you can look in all the rest of the translations and you can look in the, the concordance and, uh, you know, different kind of Bible helps. And it tells you what these words mean. You know, because people have spent their whole life uh, translating these scriptures. The, you know, get the full meaning out of it. And that's why it's so many different translations. Now, in the 21st verse, it says, The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he has consumed thee from off the land where, whether thou goes to possess. Now, out of that, how does that read? Yes, the, the Lord would make the pestilence and the plague cling to you until he has consumed and eliminated you from the land which you are entering to possess. Now, pestilence, the word itself is a fatal epidem epidemic disease. Epidemic means a widespread occurrence of an infective disease in a community at a particular time. Pandemic. Infectious disease is coronavirus. Now, that's under the curse of the law, right? Christ, what's the good news? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Right? Amen. So that means that we've been immune, vaccine from coronavirus. Amen. Because Christ took it on him. Right. That's so if he bore 
that disease, we shouldn't have to bear it. Right. Amen? Amen. I mean, if you get this into your spirit here tonight, it's going to help you a long way. Right. He already redeemed it. Because a lot of people like to say, well, looks like you got this. Looks like you got that. Just like you were saying, would somebody tell you you got to watch your back? Yeah, you got a target on your back. The devil can't do nothing to you. Right. He's a defeated foe. But you have a force field around. You have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I'm sure that's under the curse of the law. <laughs> you know, but since we're in healing class, I kind of want to zero in on these scriptures. So an infectious disease. There's more a type of infectious disease diseases, right? Or you can say contagious. Or some contagious. Have, they have infections, but you won't get it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's contagious and it can go through the air. You know, it's a pestilence. Yeah, it's a pestilence because it can enter into you by just breathing. Well, the good news is you've been redeemed from right. that. Any kind of pestilence. Mm -hmm. Any kind of infectious disease. Because mm -hmm. Christ has redeemed you yes, from redeemed. the curse of the law. Amen. He God. took it on himself. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. <laughs> he That's took it on call. himself. That's what you call blessings upon blessings. That's, upon that is the, that's why the gospel is the blessing. Right. It's right. also about what he did for right. you. <laughs> and, and you're right. Because he, he, he took... He, he who knew no sin became sin for us. He took our sins on him. Because, you know, right mm -hmm. here it says, for out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace. That's John 1. 1. John, the first chapter of John, the 16th uh, verse. Mm -hmm. It says, for out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have received grace upon grace, mm -hmm. spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessings, Favor upon favor, so you don't have to worry about what you're worrying about, and gift heaped upon gift. Amen. And we have, re we have received. So we've been redeemed from all of that. Yeah, we have. Now, now, verse twenty-two. Now, when we first started this series, we read all these verses. We just went right through them, but we didn't, you know, go into detail about them. Because we were going a, a little too fast, like the. Right. Young, now, verse say 22 that. says, the Lord shall smite thee with consumption. consumption. Let me stop here. That's like now, we have already something. talked about it's not the Lord doing the smiting. Mm -hmm. He executes judgment. We saw that in uh, Exodus, the 12th chapter. He executes judgment, and the destroyer does all the destroying. Right? Right. Uh, could I just say one thing? Mm -hmm. And it'll be quick. I'm reading Job now. Well, go to Job, Job, the Job second is chapter. talking about what's all happening to him. And he thinks God is doing all of this to him. He didn't know nothing really about Satan. the devil. It's really Satan. He didn't, know, he didn't know it was a devil. See, I don't know why like God a lot of people, to me. that's a good uh, analogy because a lot of people don't know that there is a devil. So they blame God. That they does know. all the stealing, killing, and destroying. Right. They think it's God doing yeah. it to them. That's why when they get sick, they say, well, God has put this on me to yeah. show me something. Joe, he was, he <laughs> you was know, doing that to God him. is trying to show me something through this sickness. No, God ain't trying to show you something. Yeah. That's the devil it's putting the that devil. sick. Uh, read Job 2nd uh, chapter, verse 6 through 7. 6 through 7. 2nd chapter. It says, so uh, the Lord said unto Oh, I'm sorry. Only reason I'm there because God got me. Well, you don't have to turn there because we, we're going to be the in, Lord uh, got me in that the right 28th right. chapter. But you can put your eyes on it. It sure will help you. Right. Because a lot of people don't. Job, Job like you God. said, Job didn't know it was a he devil. He didn't. He thought God was doing it. He thought him. God was doing this to him. Right. And that's what it hit me this morning. I said, he think God is doing it. Yeah, that's what yeah. that old, the whole book is That's why he got me reading it, you know. Amen. You there? Third chapter, we'll second, second chapter. chapter. Mm -hmm. six, six and seven. You just want me to read six? Just six and seven. Oh, okay. So the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life. 
So Satan departed from the uh, presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome boils and agonizing painful sores from the sole of his feet foot to the crown of his head. So that's the devil does all that right. stuff. He's the one that wants you to walk around here and, you know, when something happens, say, damn. It's just like Sam curse. Right. Mm -hmm. Condemned to destruction. Right. He wants to get that working in your mouth. Right. So that he can put some stuff on you. He wants that door open because he's an accuser. And as long as you leave that door open, he can get in there and do something. And don't because he's the one doing, he's the destroyer. Right. Like he's trying to put fear in him right now. Right. Don't let him put that fear in you. Okay, verse 22 of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. The Lord will strike you with consumption. Oh, I'm sorry. We just excited. Because, uh, the, 28th. the 28th chapter, I told you, was going back That's there. What made me excited about our one chair. Well, this, once so you really get this that. into, see, the way healing works, right. if, if anybody viewing this tape, and right. especially y'all, healing works from the inside out. It does. You got to get this uh, into 22. your spirit and soul. Mm -hmm. You got to renew your mind. If I could, I would teach five days a week on this, every week, because cases have been recorded that people who sit up under the word of God for a good three to four weeks of any illness, they just seem to get healed. That means if you got an anointed teacher and preacher teaching the word of God, not what some scientists are saying or what some doctors are saying, but what right. God right. is saying. That's God truth. is saying that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. If you believe it, being made a curse for you. Amen. He took your place. Yes. He redeemed you. Everything. He bore all these sicknesses in, under the curse of the law. That's right. So that you can say, when you when the devil tries to put them on, you say, no, I've been redeemed from that. Right. You resist the devil. You fight the good fight of faith. Amen. There's a fight going on. Amen. And the way you fight him is with your confession. You're confessing what is wrote. We read that one verse, uh, the 21st verse, it says, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you until you until he has consumed thee from off the land. The pestilence is an infectious disease like coronavirus. Right. We're in a pandemic time. And what what it says here, if you're under the curse, you're under that pandemic disease, right? right. You are. Right. If, if, that's if Christ is not in your life, in your heart, if you, have if you haven't received Christ in your life, mm -hmm. Lord help you. you're under the curse. Right. Okay, the 22nd verse, let me, uh, we'll go ahead and read it. I'll have quiet. The, the Lord will strike you with consumption, causing you to waste away like a cancer. We'll just read the and, Bible. With fever and with inflammation and with fiery heat, fiery heat, and with the sword and with blight mm -hmm. and with mildew on your crops, and they will pursue you until you perish. Now, when you really start looking up, y'all paying attention because y'all, you're going to miss something, and then you're going to be talking about, well, I feel kind of sick. And you're not going to know that it's under the curse of the law and you shouldn't be receiving it. We love you. Well, most people, when they <laughs> have learned it, they just be saying, hallelujah, we are blessed. They don't be walking around all moping and, and um, you know, um, Word about what somebody's saying about them or, or any of that stuff. It's thing, what it is you know, when you when you young. When you, you really get it into your can spirit. I tell you, you never been sick before. Hmm? Nobody's person, you are gonna have something against you. Right. 
because you learn in every well, day. You resist it. Right. Right. Now, consumption. Right. Um, these are many trans. What many translators have came up with here. It says a wasting disease, especially pulmonary. Pulmonary. Yeah. Tuberculosis. Right. That one. Yeah. An infectious bacterial disease characterized by the growth of nodes in the tissues, especially the lungs. Mm -hmm. Woo, that's one of them, one example. And that's 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 bad. Yeah. An infectious bacteria disease. We've been redeemed from that. That's right. the good news. Right. A fever and at normally high body temperature, usually a, a complete, uh, accompanied by shivering and headaches. You know, a fever can kill you. Yeah, it will. It'll destroy all your organs. We've been redeemed from right. that. We've been redeemed. We get hot enough. Everything it says inflammation. Mm -hmm. I got acute pain. Right, that's what causes it. Uh, redness, loss of function, swelling. And here's what really caught my eye. Chronic inflammation is diabetes, mm -hmm. allergies, arthritis, all, this. all that kind of stuff falls under that category. Mm -hmm. Extreme ver burning is extreme heat, inflammation, violent heat, or fever. And then um, blasting or blight has to do with a severe determinal effect on this is obviously harmful. But if it's under the curse, it ain't no good for you. I, I didn't write down what blight means. There's a lot. Now, mildew, here's one that really caught my eye. He's not talking about mildew that you find in your house because that's actually under the curse of the earth. What he's talking about here is paleness, leukemia, jaundice. jaundice. What is jaundice? <laughs> Yellow in the skin, usually caused by liver, liver disease. Liver disease. That's under the curse of the law. And people get jaundice sometimes. A slowly processing and an uncommon hepatitis. type of blood cell cancer mm -hmm. that begins in the bones and marrow. That's leukemia, mm -hmm. jaundice, paleness. Yeah. All this under the curse of the law. What's the good news? Need a trans bone transplant, some marrow transplant. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. That's the good news. Amen. He has redeemed you from this. So if any of this stuff, see people, um, bless their little heart, these are good Christian born again believers that have been holding on to this stuff for years. And it kills them. And they don't have they to. You will die, you know, if you don't have the Lord. They can say, according to Deuteronomy, the 22nd verse said, the Lord will strike you with consumption, causing you to waste away with and with fever and with inflammation, with fiery heat, with the sword and with the blight, and with mildew. You can say that's under the curse of the law. Then you can go to Galatians, the third chapter, verse 13, and you can say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, Amen. being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree. Amen. Now, if Christ redeemed you from that, that means he paid the cost. Yeah, he did. His life. You know, when, when you redeem somebody, you have bought them back. Mm -hmm. The blood of Jesus Christ and Christ himself has bought us back. We were on our way to hell. That's we right. deserved hell. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. All have sinned. The wages right. of sin is death. 
trespassing. And, and see, a lot of people don't realize this. Well, they say, well, I'm just fine. I'm living a, a good lifestyle. I'm living a moral lifestyle. I don't bother, I don't nobody. bother nobody. Yeah, but why are you calling him Lord, Lord, and do not what he said? Not a servant. Because, you know, from the outside, all people pretty much look alike. I mean, they got two arms, two legs, two eyes, nose, mouth, you know, hair. You know what I mean? But the way you can tell if they're really in Christ, we had a verse here that we were looking at. I think it was 2 Timothy. The way you can tell if somebody's really in Christ It says, the surrendering of your entire self to God in right. Christ with confident trust in his power, wisdom, and goodness, a faith. That's, that's what you got to do. That's what it's all about. Because, you know, when I read that 22nd verse and I saw the diabetes under there, I said, well, you know, I ain't supposed to have that. <laughs> we ain't supposed to have none of these sicknesses. Now, uh, look with me with verse 27. We're just looking at sickness because this is healing class. Verse 27 of that same chapter says, The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt. Ooh, I don't want that. <laughs> the botch of Egypt. What is the botch of Egypt? It says, now these are translators that have translated all these words. And, you know, he's, this one translation says, boils, boils, inflamed spots, inflammation, eruptions of man, leprosy. That's verse are you on? I'm on 27 first. Oh. That's the botch of Egypt. Borals. Why is it referred to as the botch of Egypt? Uh, this I, is the King James. I call them tombs. What does your Bible call it? The Lord will strike you with borals of Egypt. So they do call with, it in uh, the, the um, amplified borals. And with tumors and with scabs. Well, that itch mm -hmm. and cannot be healed. Cannot be. So then, that's the joke. What they left out, they said with tumors, and the King James says um, with hemorrhoids. With hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Yeah. Hemorrhoids. But those are hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. Which are tumors, piles, scabs, curvy. <laughs> you all know what curvy is? You all know what curvy is? Yeah. You ever heard that? You heard that medical term? It's usually with the bones or something. Scurvy. That must be it. S C U R V E. Scurvy. What is that? The pirate guy. But they lack certain vitamins. I can't they remember exactly what they see. Yeah, it was the effect in their bones and stuff. Right. Their bones were literally like rods. <laughs> well, they were bending and stuff. And the itches and a, and a, an eruption disease like smallpox, skin disease. <laughs> That's the itch. But Job had it all because he was scratching himself with broken um, shells of bones. Right, because that, what is this, what do y'all call it, scurvy? Yeah. yeah they like vitamin C, to my knowledge. They wasn't well, it cut enough my eyes. things like that to eat. Because they'd be on that um, ship. They'd be in mm -hmm. the submarines and stuff. 
Yes, there's a condition caused by a lack of vitamin C See, in the diet. Because I'm telling you, Lord, I've studying my medicine when I was in school. Don't include enough fruit and vegetables in their diet or at risk. Mm -hmm. It says symptoms may not occur for a few months after a person di dietary intake of vitamin C drops too low. Bruising, bleeding gums, weakness, fatigue, and rash are among the symptoms. It is. Their teeth be bleeding and everything. Their gums. And you have to What's the good news? Christ has redeemed us right. from the curse of the law. Amen. So that shouldn't be we in us. See to our patients when, when they have uh, different skin problems. Amen. To help them heal. Now, when we read them verses when we first started this series, but we didn't see all this. I mean, I just read through it, you know, verse after verse after verse. But now it's kind of like an eye opener. But you never would have let me go in detail about this. Well, go in detail. That's what you're here no, for. No, I'm just saying you because y'all really never could take all of that. Well, we. I think the. Not only I need to know, but our viewers need to know. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I'm hoping that you would go into detail about some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. You got something you want to say about all well, that? The consumption, like, you know, back in the day, that's what they called cancer. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were dying with consumption, um, especially our people, because they wasn't even allowed to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't have insurance and different things, so they uh, they did not treat our our people. Dying with fever, inflammation, yeah. because when you don't get treated, it leads to infection and breaking down of all your organs. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing, but you know we don't have to have it. But that's we that's that's what I want y'all to see. We don't have to. That even if you can't get to a doctor, the doctor is within us. You system. have a great physician, mm -hmm. Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, the great physician, God. He says in Exodus. Twenty six fifteen. You, you don't have to turn there. Because we receive um, the healing and everything when we was receive. Was it twenty six fifteen or was it fifteen twenty six? Oh, I'll find it. I'll look over here. I know it's one way or another. Let me just see here. What about you look on? Just hold on. Now. Okay. Know it when I get there. Fifteen twenty six. So I've been all in that exit. Amen. It strengthens me, you know. I mean, God can bring all mm -hmm. this stuff to you. Oh, he says true. in 1526, was, was Exodus, true. he yeah. said, And say, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto yeah. the voice of the Lord thy God. That is a key. It is. I had that in my lesson. Um, mm -hmm. And will do that which is right in his sight. Right. And will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. <coughs> see, I, see, I got that underlined because that that is so important. And right now, he he wrote in the in the Psalms. He said he sent his word and healed them. Right, he did. He, we got his word, and we have it in us. So any of these things, um, a few little things that are messing with me now, I have a better fighting chance because I believe what God is saying over right. what man is saying. He said, listen. And he said, if anybody comes and preach any other gospel than what he preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let this curse come on him. Because, you know, a lot of people say, well, God is trying to show me something. That's why I got this. And can I read it out of this? What? Yeah, go ahead. It's because they need to know what they had to do. It says, it tells you in uh, if, what to if do you too. will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of your, of your God, 
and do what is right in his sight. See, we got to do right in his sight. And listen to his commandments and keep foremost in your thoughts and actively obey all his precepts and statutes. Then I will put, I will not put on you any of the diseases which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Well, let's look at one more verse here that is uh, I read y'all when we first started this. Verse uh, 35. In the Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy 28th chapter. It says, The Lord will strike you on the knees and legs. And on the legs. Amen. With sore balls yeah, he will. that you cannot heal. Right, you can't heal. From the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what Satan did to Job. Yeah, he did. It's yeah. almost the same exact yeah, word. Yeah, is. That's why I had to go back. There. It's almost yeah. the same exact yeah. thing that Satan did. Right. This, uh, ooh, man, he got my my man here just, <laughs> and Job, thank God, he's trying to But what's the good news, children? Oh, Lord. No, Wait, that, ain't, that ain't what it says. No, go to God. See, God said, say God say. says these are words a certain up. way right. because the, they have power in them. Right. And if you say them any other different way, they don't have no power. No, and that's what you would be saying. Well, I said it like, no, you didn't say it like you said And a lot of people say, well, I I'm, I tried it. No, you don't no, try. You this don't is try not it. something that you try. This is something that you do. And if you got any of these conditions that we've been talking about here, you need to find it under the curse of the law, and then you go to Galatians, the, the third, third chapter, chapter verse, 13. verse 13, and you say, Christ has redeemed, you put yourself in that, me, from the curse of the law. Amen? Amen, Amen. you have to. You have to, you have to. you have to get serious about this, and... What do you what do you realize it or not? Healing is already beginning you. Right, that's right. It has from the minute because you, you are started. saying what God has said. From the minute you and His started. words have so much power. Yes, it does. It has power in it, and we was just looking at that in John the sixth chapter um, because she was teaching on that. Um, that was Sunday, wasn't it? Right. And I and the, the, just popped up in my spirit, John 6, 63, it says, It is the spirit that right. gives life. Yeah, it's the spirit. The flesh conveys right. no benefit. Right. It is of no account. Right. No the words I speak, I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Providing eternal life. Amen. It's all about his word. That's why I say you got to say it like that or you quote it out and amplify it. Amplify it puts it a little different. It Amen. says Christ has, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law. He still got it that way. He redeemed us from the, right. curse, of the, law, us from the curse of the law. And it's condemnation by becoming a curse for us. Right. For it is written, written, Curse is every one who hangs crucified on a tree cross. Amen. You, you really got to get this into your spirit. Because, right, you know, you hear things like in religion, like we heard this for years. Well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. If you calling yourself a sinner, you're saying you are a sinner. What is that gonna make you? I'm a sinner. It's gonna make you, sure you a sinner. Sure That's that means sin. that you're not believing that you are saved. And we saints. But you, you know, you're but supposed you to be a saint. You're right. supposed to be the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has made you righteous. Yes. He, he became sin. For you. Amen. Praise God. 
So you are the righteousness of God. You're not a old sinner saved by grace. You are a saint. Amen. And saint. you know, a lot of times we say things like, I catch myself doing it, but I'm glad I can catch myself doing it. Right. And, and <laughs> ask the Lord, have mercy on me. You know, there is a reason why I say, forgive me of my trespasses, forgive me of my sins, mm -hmm. um, as I forgive others, you know, when I pray over here, because we say things, we shouldn't say. and our words be going against what God is saying. And that's why what we say, now you, a lot of people may not believe this, but what comes out of your mouth has more power in your life than what God is saying. It's true. And we, we got to be careful what comes out. And you really got to be careful. Because it, uh, it says that. Okay, going back to Galatians. Don't let speech come out of your mouth. You know, it, it, it has all the exodus and everything. We, had to, we just had to be careful. Right. I just thought that would give you, uh, you know, when you, you know, see a boil or something or something that is abnormal happening in your health. You're supposed to stand up right away and say, no, devil, because that's where it's coming from. It is coming from. And say, Christ has redeemed me from that mm -hmm. curse of the law, and I know it's under the curse. Mm -hmm. I know it's in one of these verses, verses 21, 22, um, 27, or 35. Oh, and if that is chapter. not enough, hey, let me it. give you a few more here. Mm -hmm. if, if 35 won't cover it. I can go to uh, verse 58. We read? read all this stuff. Yeah, we didn't read it all. Where you, which uh, you I can go to verse 58. Verse 58 says, If thou will not observe and do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear his glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make yes, thy so plagues God. wonderful, mm -hmm. and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuous, and sore sickness, and long continuous. This is how people just be, you know, carrying this around. Well, my mother my had daddy, it. My daddy. My grandmother had it. And, and they, they act like they're proud to have this illness. And they won't say, well, Christ had Christ, but Christ right, redeemed, redeemed you from right. that. And then it says in uh, verse 60, Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, mm -hmm. which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. You, right. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law. Mm -hmm. until you are then the will the Lord bring unto thee until the, thou art be destroyed. Be destroyed. So that means any kind of sickness. Right. You've been redeemed from any kind of sickness. Now, you don't have to believe me, but I remember uh, Brother Hagin was telling this story because we used to watch a lot of his videos. Yeah, and, that's into his word. Uh, that's what he taught on healing and faith. Right. And he was telling this story about this one lady. She used to be a doctor. And then once she retired from that, she started a, a home that she would take in hospice patients, you know, yeah, people, hospice, patients yeah, that, you know, the, the medical society couldn't do no more with. Yeah, they were done. And she would use these verses. She'll say, Deuteronomy 28, 27 says, consumption and all of that. And then she would say, okay, now turn to Galatians 3, 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what she'd have all her patients doing. She would read them to them if, if they weren't able to read. And then when they got able to read, they would go through all these verses read about sickness. Said. And they would read them and then they'd go to Galatians and read Galatians 3.14. Right. And, and 
he just said that many of them people regained their health. Right, because they had faith and belief. By just doing that, in his word. Right. But you had to have faith. His word is powerful. Right, faith in Jesus Christ. Well, That's they, the they start fighting the good fight of faith. Right. You, you know, if you don't have something to stand on that yeah. is real, God is real. He, he, is, he real. is faithful when we are not faithful. And that's what we've been talking about in our faith class in Romans, the third chapter. We've been talking about that because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it says... Um, in Romans 3, 3, for what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yeah, certainly not. You know, just because some people don't believe the word of God, some people don't want to hear the word of God. Right. You know, if, when I talk to people and I tell them about God's goodness and they don't want to hear no more, I just say next. But right. most of what people are looking at, when you're teaching on healing and uh, faith, they're looking at, well, what kind of life are you living? Right, they are looking at that. Well, I know I'm up in age and the Lord has kept us healthy. Yes, he has. And he has made us wealthy. Kept our and, and a lot of people, uh, <laughs> you know, people know us and we don't even know them. We have six it tickles children. me because they say, Three hey, Reverend Carter, yeah. and, and I, I can't even, uh, I don't even know them until I, you know, I talked to them for a while, and then I realized uh, one of the churches that we were a member of, right. they were a member there too. And they still, they say, you know, you look the same way. The only thing different is your hair is gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how, you know, people are looking at they you. You know, what you are doing, Speaks a lot more louder than what you are saying. Amen. The Action. people Action speak louder. don't mind being around a blessed person. No. A person that has joy say, and in good health. Rub off on me. You because, know. see, that's what happened with uh, Abraham and Lot. Right. Lot was hanging around Abraham and he got the blessing he rubbed did. off on him. He did. And this is how it happens when you are around blessed people, the blessing rubs off on them. That's like uh, Joseph was in the, wherever he worked, even when he right. was wherever, in, when he, even he when he was in prison or whatever. He made it. He still, they were everybody was blessed, and a lot of people don't realize even the jobs that you work at, and you are There's a child of God. To, to that job. job gets blessed just because you're working there. Right. And I saw this during the pandemic. My job never closed up. Never closed up. I never even missed a day. Unless I, I wanted even, to take a day I off. I mean, I took a day off to, you know, take care of some personal business. Mm -hmm. You can take a PTO and all that. But as far as anything else, I, I worked every day and still working. You and I both did. And taking care of the sick. People. And the Lord has kept me. Yeah, yeah the, the devil has tried to slip a few things in on me. You know, you know. He tried to slip some pain on my leg and my back. I said, oh, no, devil. I resisted. I said, Christ has redeemed me from the, that, that sickness. He, any, anything that goes out of whack with my body, the first thing I check on, okay, I must have did something for the enemy to get in there. Because what we're supposed to be doing is walking in love and walking in faith. We have to. That takes that 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 keep you busy all day. All day long. Walking in and love. Keep your mind and walking focused in faith. on God. You know, because that's a, Jesus. See, if you're walking in love, you won't steal. Right. If you're walking in love, you won't mess with somebody else's wife or husband. Mm -hmm. If you're walking in love, you you're gonna do what is right on your job. And you watch the words that come out of your mouth. You won't, well, most of all, you you're, not gonna, you're not going. You're not going to say something that's going to harm somebody. No, you don't want to do. And that. that's uh, that's uh, you're not going to do your neighbor any harm. No. 
even if they're doing something and you know it's not right, you're not going to be the cause of them getting in trouble. Because if anybody's doing something that's not right, sooner or later it's going to catch up with them. Because they're out of the will of God. And that door is open in their life. That's, you know. You can tell them gently with love. Um, well, yeah, you can tell them. But here's what it says. Uh, we're going to end on this. Deuteronomy uh, 28, 15 says, this is the Lord speaking. He yeah, says, really. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken or listen unto the yeah, voice of the Lord thy you. God Lord to Lord. observe and do all his commandments and his statutes mm -hmm. which I command thee this day. All these curses will come upon thee and right. overtake thee. Overtake. But in the first verse it says, if you will, and it, it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee to stay Amen. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations on the earth mm -hmm. and all these blessings shall come on thee Amen. and overtake thee mm -hmm. if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall I be in the city. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy mouth. Bless shall be thy best. Bless, 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 bless. Blessings upon blessings. Gifts upon and that's what it says here in Galatians yeah. that this is why Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. It says in that next verse, verse 14, that the blessings mm -hmm. of Abraham might come on the Gentiles to right. Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Right. We're going to talk about that. Because. But you have to believe. It. You, have to, you believe it. have to be filled with the Spirit. You do. do. You have to, to be. do these things. That's the only way. <laughs> because if you're not Spirit led or Spirit filled, if your you Spirit is you running anything. low and your faith is running low, you're going to get yourself in trouble, especially you sure if your joy gauge is low. You don't have no joy. you you got to realize that, hey, I'm in trouble. Something's going on here that shouldn't be going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the, the we thank y'all for stopping yeah. by. I hope that helped you. Amen. It sure helped me. Yeah. I mean, it, praise God. I mean, sure, I got a little belly, but praise God, that's from a lot of good eating. Right. You could just have skin and bones. <laughs> right. Y'all have a good night. God bless you.